Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with fourth chapter of microengineering, the transferred electron devices. In these devices, those have the semiconductor platform. There are two valleys, we can say, or the two different energy levels. And when the semiconductor compound is supplied with certain voltage and it crosses a threshold value, so that the electrons from one energy level are transferred to another energy level. This effect is mostly popular by the name gun effect and the device is called as gun diode working as oscillator. In this chapter we have already covered the gun effect diode which is basically having a semiconductor substrate of N type gallium arsenide. The gun effect we have seen along with the understanding of RWS theory and looking at a two valley model. We have solved also the two problems and also seen how exactly the high domain is formed in this particular substrate. Now let us see what are the various modes of operation while the gun diode oscillates. So here we start with our topic modes of operation. According to the Copeland, there are four basic modes of operation for the gun diode having a N-type gallium arsenide substrate as a compound semiconductor material. The first mode is named as simply gun oscillation mode. So I mention it. After the gun oscillation mode, we have the second mode. The second mode is called as stable amplification mode. After stable amplification mode, we have the third one that is called as LSA oscillation mode. And lastly, we have the fourth mode named as bias circuit oscillation mode. Now these are the four basic modes according to the Copeland to see the observation onto the gun diode. These four modes are summarized with the help of one diagram. The diagram we can see in the detail. So in this diagram here we will be taking the two parameters onto the horizontal and vertical axis. Onto the horizontal axis, we shall be taking a product, product or a multiplication. Multiplication of here we shall be taking small n suffix 0 into capital L. So n suffix 0 represents the doping level into the material here. And here capital L denotes the length here. So doping into length. So in terms of per centimeter square, the parameter is taken onto the horizontal axis. And here we shall be taking the markings of at very start, we shall be taking 10 raised to the power 11, then 10 raised to power 12, 10 raised to the power 13, and finally 10 raised to power 14 in per centimeter square here. Whereas, on to the vertical axis also we are going to take a multiplication or product of the two parameters. So it will be a multiplication of F into L here. So F represents a frequency value. I mentioned here. F represents a frequency value whereas L is again the same. That is length of the device under consideration. So F into L. Here we obtain in terms of centimeter per second here. So centimeter per second basically this is the unit of the velocity. So this product F into L gives us the velocity here. Now on this vertical axis we shall be taking the markings of here we have the dashed line representing 10 raised to the power 7 centimeters per second whereas here we have 10 raised to the power 8 centimeters per second fl value or the velocity we can say. So in this diagram 
this particular portion that is very very closer in between 10 to power 11 to 10 to power 12 of the doping into length product and here the value of fl or the velocity that is less than 10 to power 7 is called as here we write small signal stability So this is a possibility of attaining basically 10 raised to power 7 of centimeters per second of velocity or the FL product is very very important to operate the device. So hence I write this to be the possibility only and that has been shaded here. Now next to that as we increase the doping into the length we go to this particular portion here and this portion is especially known as delay domain now this particular dashed line also represents the transit time domain also called as gun domain basically this is the first mode of operation for the gun diode whereas when it is not possible for the gun diode to make the oscillations under the specified conditions the values that we will definitely see further is called as quench domain and the very popular here that it is the stable amplification that we have written at the second case so for second mode we have this range of the doping and length product with respect to the product of frequency and the length here. Here we have the lossy type of dielectric in these values here. The doping divided by the frequency that gives us the constant value 2 into 10 raised to the power 4 here. Whereas the another popular and the last mode of operation that is called as LSA and here the ratio of N0 to F is equal to 2 into 10 raised to power 5 here and here in this particular shaded portion with respect to the lossiness into the dielectric here we obtain here positive resistance. So this was a summary to whatever the basic four modes of operation of the gun diode are there. Now we shall see what exactly the criteria can be there so that we can make a proper classification of various modes into the gun diode. Now to see the criterion to classify the modes of operation of the gun diode. Here we shall be taking the space charge effect into the consideration. Therefore very first of all we shall be taking the help of time rate of growth of the space charge layers that have been represented as capital Q in the bracket x comma t parameter. So this is equal to capital Q in the bracket x minus v into t of 0 and here we have the exponential in multiplication to this given as a ratio of t to T D here or we can also represent it by tau suffix D. Now here T D or tau suffix D if you make that is the ratio of permittivity epsilon by the conductivity sigma expressed as epsilon as it is in the denominator we represent E into the doping N0 along with the mod of mu suffix N here. So this is the magnitude of the negative resistance. So here I write magnitude of negative dielectric as this is the time we shall be calling this to be the dielectric relaxation time. Now epsilon is the semiconductor dielectric permittivity measured into farads per meter. We have N0 is equal to doping concentration 
then we have mu suffix n represented as the negative mobility small e represents the electric charge and sigma represents the conductivity now this particular time rate of growth with respect to the device here we can better clarify with the help of one diagram so in this diagram we take this to be representation of one electrode called as cathode negatively charged this is the another electrode called as anode that is positively charged so here we can measure distance x in this particular direction so that from this cathode terminal to anode terminal the complete distance the maximum value is capital L here from this particular position we can make the measurement of V sub x t so this is actually representing Q of x minus V sub x t comma 0 here whereas this represents Q of x comma t here so this will be the direction of the velocity v here the position of the cathode we can keep as x is equal to 0 whereas at anode we can make x is equal to capital L the time moment for this to have is a t is equal to 0 whereas for this one we can simply represent it as t now transit time is the time taken by the charge carrier to travel from one electrode to another electrode that is from cathode to the anode in our case so now with respect to the entire transit time the previous equation with respect to the time rate of growth will be applicable there and now the growth factor can be expressed as here we write this is equal to Q of L by L by V divided by Q of 0 comma 0 so this is with respect to the end location and this is with respect to the start location so this can be expressed as the exponential of capital L divided by V into tau D here or we can also express it as exponential of L into the doping concentration N0 into the electric charge the mode of negative mobility divided by epsilon into the velocity v so this is the growth factor and now the criterion for classification of various modes of the gun diode we can express it as the product of doping concentration n0 with the length of the device specimen should be greater than epsilon into v divided by e into mod of mu sub x n so this is the very very important criteria with this particular criteria we can make classification of various modes this formulation will also be helpful while solving the problems based on to this particular device now if we get back to the diagram here the diagram representing a graph where we have the applied voltage in terms of the electric field also you can take versus the dripped velocity of the charge carrier so in this diagram we shall be taking here the electric field applied across the bulk specimen gallium arsenide here so here we start at zero and here we have the dripped velocity denoted simply v or v suffix d here now the drift velocity we shall be mostly taking for this device in terms of centimeters per second here now we know that initially with the increase into the applied electric field there it will be increase into the drift velocities of the electron it will attain this particular stage at that one we have the electric field marked as e suffix th the threshold value for the typical consideration we have this value to be 3300 volts per centimeter after this threshold value 
the drift velocity is supposed to decrease producing decrease into the conduction current density and this exhibits the negative resistance after a certain drop down here it is further sustained at this particular level so the sustained velocity we can denote by v suffix s and it is actually the value 10 raised to the power 7 centimeters per second for the typical case of gun diode now this vs can be marked here with the dashed line on the vertical axis and for the initial increase the corresponding marking of electric field here can also be denoted as capital E suffix S. So initially at 0 to ES there it was increased and whatever the drift velocity has been achieved at this point after a negative resistance curve that drift velocity has been sustained here. So V suffix S denotes the sustained velocity. Now as we have gone through the understanding of basic classification of modes of operation of the gun diode according to the Copeland. Here with the help of the diagram we have certain classification with respect to the criteria of classification also that we have gone through. So very first of all the mode first one is called as transit time mode of operation. And for transit time mode, the duration tau suffix 0 is equal to the transit time that is the time taken by electron to have a journey from cathode to that of anode end. And here in this particular diagram, we represent V here. This is the level of DC bias. The threshold electric field can be marked at this particular level. The sustained electric field can also be marked here and this will be the time duration T as a parameter taken onto the horizontal axis. So this much will be the time duration, a multiplication of F into the L shall be giving us the particular velocity value in this particular transit time mode here. The next port is represented with this particular diagram that is called as delayed mode. I repeat and for the delayed mode the duration represented toss up is 0 shall be greater than the transit time. So the transit time represented as toss up is T here. So here also we have a DC bias with respect to the signal represented here having the zero markings like this and these are the threshold values of the electric field the sustained values of the electric field and here the time t as a parameter so now this marking we shall be taking as tau sub x t the transit time here so here the one cycle has been completed into the same duration hence the time period is equal to the transit time the mode is called as a transit time mode. Here tau 0 is greater than this one. So for one cycle this will be the marking of tau 0 from this position to this position. So this is greater than the transit time. Hence we obtain delay into the output. Hence the name given to this mode delayed mode. Now the next mode or the third mode according to the criterion we have gone through we can represent with the help of the figure sub figure c here this mode is called as quenched mode of operation for the gun device here here the criterion is that the time period tau 0 is less than the transit time represented as tau sub x t so this is the marking of tau sub x t time as a parameter here this is the dc bias this is the threshold electric field intensity value the electric field simply this is the sustained field value and here we write the signal with respect to the velocity v so this is the time duration tau zero which is less than that of the transit time here next to that we have the most popular mode of operation called as lsa mode 
so here the lsa stands for the limited space accumulation mode here in the lsa mode we have the time duration t0 that is less than the transit time tt and here we have tau 0 is equal to the particular case we take three times tau d here so that can be represented in this particular figure so here we have three cycles here the three cycles that we have represented in the time duration of transit time here so this mode is very very fast mode as far as the device operation is concerned now as we have seen a diagrammatic representation of various modes of operation in the gun diode material here now we shall be having the specific values of the product of frequency and the length of the specimen so very first of all for the transit time mode so here we mention for the first mode transit time mode also called as the gun mode so in the gun mode the frequency of the device frequency of oscillation into the length of the specimen is equal to the sustaining velocity or it is also equal to the drift velocity of the electron and the value of the drift velocity the sustaining velocity is the same that we obtain it to be the 10 raised to the power 7 centimeter per second here so here we can say that for the transit time domain f into l is equal to 10 raised to power 7 centimeter per second this is for the first mode now the second mode is called as delayed mode as we have seen that for the delayed domain mode the duration of the signal is greater than that of the transit time so unless and until this high field domain that has been formed into the structure reaches to the anode the another or the second mode cannot form the second domain cannot form here therefore this is called as the delayed domain mode the multiplication of frequency with the l giving us the velocity value ranges between the two so it ranges between 10 raised to power 6 centimeter per second up to 10 raised to the power 7 centimeter per second that is the value of the transit time mode or the gun mode here the next mode that we have represented with the diagram that is quenched domain mode in the quenched domain mode the velocity value the product of f into l is greater than 2 into 10 raised to power 7 centimeter per second so in this particular mode because of the specific values the whatever the domain has been formed here that gets collapsed before it reaches to the anode terminal so here quench refers to the stopped here collapse here therefore the name is given now the last mode is called as lsa mode that we have represented here so here lsa stands for limited space accumulation the accumulation is of the charges hence this is sometimes also referred to as limited space charge accumulation mode so this is abbreviated as lsa here for the lsa mode also we have the multiplication of frequency into the length of the specimen that is greater than 2 into 10 raised to the power 7 centimeters per second here in the lsa mode as the frequency is very very high so the domains don't have sufficient time to get form and then drift from cathode end to the anode end therefore most of the domains that have been formed into the lsa mode are maintained under negative conductance state so these were the various modes of operation with respect to the gun diode here by the next lecture we shall be addressing the next topic in the family of transport electron devices the diode is called as lsa diodes 
I hope you are getting the microwave engineering details very well. For more information like this, you can subscribe to eKeda channel. Thank you.